All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Lisa with the Dallas Area Chamber. We are here having fun with Samantha Irwin with Kaizen Zone. We will begin um, the customer engagement. Um, as you can imagine, this is an interesting time to try to stay engaged. So we've asked Samantha to come and share with us uh, for this next time. And we will be recording this and the notes and everything. So we will have that for you guys available either later today or tomorrow morning. So at that note, good morning, Samantha, and it is all yours. Good morning. It's Monday, I love Monday. So thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, I uh, give you kudos for, for grabbing on this Monday morning and uh, trying to navigate this time that, that it's happening right now. Um, so kudos to you for being here. I'm sure you've dealt with this crazy couple weeks of closing businesses and changing it and people at home in your space are trying to work from home. Uh, that's a whole new ball game and it's in and of itself. Um, and I wanted to give a big hand clap and whatnot to the chamber because um, they have done what I see so many businesses doing right now and they've done it really well. They've responded by asking, you know, they responded to their need and said, oh my gosh, what do our, our business members need, our customers need? And then how do we get it to them quickly? And so uh, you guys have a small staff and I wanted to give you some props right away for doing what you've done because it's been great. I think it's a good example for all of us. So bravo for you guys. All right. Um, I want to, I'm going to screen share this. So I've not been a co-host before. So I did it earlier. We'll see if it works now. So give me a second here. I think it's working. If I can just, there we go. Slideshow from beginning. All right. So what we are covering today is um, how to engage with our customers during this time because it's a little bit different, obviously, and um, how to not lose them and maybe even gain a few customers during this crazy time that we are in right now. So, um, oh, Katie, uh, she's fantastic. Thank you, Katie. She's going to, will you drop that uh, worksheet, that PDF into the chat zone? And you can use that to take notes during this time if you'd like, or you can use it afterwards. It's designed to be able to use after this talk um, to be able to apply what we are talking about directly to your business right away, okay? All right, so I'm gonna jump right in. And the first thing we talk about is why should you be consistently engaging with your customer right now? Um, this question, I'm on a couple of different business groups. One business group with that's only women, um, a business owner, she closed her business and she posed this question. And she said, um, should I really be posting right now? My customers have bigger problems and I feel like I'm overwhelming them. They're already overwhelmed with things right now. And I was surprised when she posted that, how many people actually uh, that that resonated with and they were feeling the same thing as a business owner. Thankfully, there were other people that said, oh my gosh, no, definitely don't just disengage. It's like a divorce or band-aid ripping off. You don't want to just be gone. So um, that question is why should you be consistently engaging with them? If you have a product or service, your customers still want at least part of, if they can get part of that product or service. If you don't have a product or service, like you're a hotel that they can't actually come to right now, there's still a lot of different and creative ways that you can be communicating and engaging with them because your customers are creating new habits right now. And you don't want to be, uh, you want to be the habit that they keep. Um, the squeaky wheel is something that you can use as an analogy. And I'll refer to it a couple times. Um, not really to be a squeaky wheel in an annoying way, but you understand the, the analogy of being the squeaky wheel, if it's the kid that's nagging you all the time, or if it's that uh, engagement that just happens, you want to be the squeaky wheel in a not annoying squeaky way, but in a positive way. So a couple of statistics, and they're on the screen right now, but um, they're important to go over. So 
financial reasons why you need to be consistently engaging, it's six to seven times more expensive to acquire a new customer than it is to keep a current one. That is really important. It's important for you to keep in mind because probably right now when you're pulling back on finances, you don't really have a lot of extra money just to throw at new customer acquisition. And then the second statistic is that the probability of selling to a new person is five to 20%, which isn't bad. It's part of normal business processes, but the probability of selling to an existing customer is 60 to 70%. Those odds are much better, which is another reason, a very strong reason why you want to be consistently engaging so that you don't lose them. You don't want to be out of sight, out of mind. That, that's not a great thing right now, of course. So let's see here. Next question is how do you consistently connect with your customer? So let's say you have, you're limited on your product or service that you can provide or you can't actually provide it. So how do you consistently connect with your customer? It's a problem for you to solve. So you solve it by asking a couple of questions. First of all, where were they before COVID quarantine? Where did they hang out? For example, if your customer hangs out in primarily on uh, Facebook, you don't really want to go build your platform on Instagram. So you need to ask yourself, where were they? If the only place that you engaged with your customer was actually physically at your place of business before COVID quarantine, then please use that as a big flag to say, oh, we need to make sure we have other ways to, to uh, other methods to communicate with our customer. It shouldn't just be at your place of business. So question for your homework, where were they? Where do they hang out? Okay. Where are they now? Well, we know now they're at home <laughs> and they're all over social media, right? So the place that you want to work on connecting with them now is on social media and at their home, which might use email. Um, the, the different ways to communicate with your customer, you don't want to um, just put all your eggs in one basket. So for example, well, I'll answer these other questions. Who or what has their attention? It's their kids, it's Netflix, it's videos, it's the news, it's all of those things. It's trying to get the things that they need either from you or somewhere else. And then how do you get their attention? So this relates to the basket of eggs. You don't want to have all of your eggs in one basket by only using one channel of communication or one, one mode of communication through that channel. So the best way to communicate and to engage and keep your customers is to diversify. We talk about diversifying our portfolios. This is very much in the same vein. So if you, you can say, for example, you can repurpose content and let's say you push that content out or promotion or information via email. Um, a different way to use that same content because there's a lot of noise on social media and one, it's not a one and done thing just because you put something out there on Facebook that does not mean at all that they're going to see it the first time. So let's say you push it out uh, via email or a blog and then maybe you take a picture of that content which you've repurposed and you post it on Facebook. And then maybe you do a video and you connect the links there, right? So you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket by just using one type of uh, way to communicate. People learn differently. There are learning styles. Um, and you want to try to communicate by pushing all of those buttons that you can. So visual, interactive, kinesthetic, tactile, those different kinds of learning styles. So you want to come at this communication problem from multiple angles. And then the other thing about basket of eggs is that I really, this is kind of an, this is something that I, I, um, I guess come back to again and again. You don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket in that you don't want to just build your audience engagement on a platform you don't own. Social media is a platform you do not own imagine what would happen if tomorrow Facebook was gone. Just like we are in the social quarantine like that, what would happen if 
your social media platform was tomorrow not there at all. Do you still own those email addresses and can you still connect with your customer where they are, whether it's social media or at their house? So that's uh, something I am going to harp on again and again. It's kind of old school email, but it's old but good. If it works, it works. All right. So what does your customer need and want from you right now? All right. Well, obviously they probably would like your service or your product. You may or may not be able to give them your service or product completely um, or even at all, but that's not the only thing that your customer needs or wants from you right now. They, all, they want service, of course, but they also want some inspiration. They want leadership. Business owners are leaders in the community and they're looking to business owners for that leadership. They want a connection. That's a huge one right now. They want, and they're just like dying for some connection. Um, they're stuck at home and there are definitely ways that you can connect with them. They want information, of course, how you're doing, how your staff is doing, how they can get your product and service, and they want relationship. Um, there's a lot of things that they need from you and they want from you besides simply the service or the product that you sell or that you provide. So this is this screen here, these notes, and I, you have them in your notes uh, packet, that PDF. These are things, if you're having trouble thinking about, oh, I just don't wanna be selling to my customer all the time. That's not the only thing that they want or need. So you can refer to something, you can refer back to this um, slide and your PDF and you can think about what are the other things that I can provide for my customer? If the chamber's doing it. We're doing lots of service and leadership and connection right now. All right, so what can you do to strengthen your customer relationships and retention? Oh, and, and an aside, if you have a question or a comment, I don't see the chat while I'm screen sharing. So um, I'm not sure, we'll have to have somebody, maybe Katie wave at me or Lisa wave at me or unmute herself yeah. if there's something. Okay. I'll just interrupt you and let you know that there's a question. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, so what, what can we do right now to strengthen our relationships with our customers and to strengthen that, uh, keep that retention high? I'm gonna spend a bit of time here on this slide because this one, it's about connection. It's one of my favorites. I love this. This one is completely and firmly founded in the root of connections. So yes, they want your product or service. Your question, like the Chamber's asking or Erica's asking, um, is how can I solve the problem for my customer? Connect with them regarding your product and service. You can connect with them or create connections with your mission and purpose and sharing that. This is vitally important, and I know it might sound corny, but if you don't have a mission, a mission statement, now is a per perfect time to do it because the mission is the guiding principle that will, um, it sustains you through times like this, and it keeps you going, it keeps you moving forward. It's a strong drive. Last week on Thursday, Rick uh, Leibowitz shared, and he said his mission and purpose for his bagel shop was to provide a place like Cheers. That's what drove, that was the foundational core driving purpose and mission for his business. That's what, that's kind of a litmus test for things. That mission, if you haven't uh, done one, please do one. I've got resources if you need help. If it's time to revisit it, I would revisit it. Um, it I, I'm going to keep on this for a second because it definitely, it applies to your hiring practices for employee retention and workplace satisfaction. It's tied into that. It's tied into your customer acquisition and retention because people want to connect with the mission. They want to connect with things that resonate with them. For example, I like to donate during the OPB drive because they plant a tree and I'm a tree nut. I like to purchase from this place called Zero Waste Cartel when I can't find it locally because they don't use plastic. I will, um, I'm located in Hood River and before COVID, I would make an extra stop to go down to Arome in order to get my spices, my spice bottles refilled because um, 
I valued the not, not using the plastic. It's one of our, my personal missions, my husband and I, to do, um, we, we got down to two garbage cans to the curb one year. This year it'll probably be three because it's a bit more challenging, but um, I would make that extra stop because I resonate with her mission. I will drive to the Dalles. There's a business here that I can literally walk to. It's very close to me. And there's another one that's in the Dalles. It's a similar uh, business. I will drive to the Dalles and I do so often um, just to frequent that place in the Dalles because their service is superior. People connect to your mission, right? Um, they also connect with your staff. <laughs> this one's kind of, I think you might giggle at this one, but I don't have children, but I've heard this many times from people where they say, who's your favorite child? <laughs> and I thought, if I got that question, I might answer it. Well, it depends on the day. <laughs> because you may have a favorite child that you hike with, or you may have a favorite child that you bake with, or you snuggle with, and they can all be your favorites in different ways. But just like your favorite children, in air quotes, you... I'm pretty sure I have some favorite clients and customers in your business. It probably popped in your mind when I said it right now. There are people who walk through your door or pick up the phone that you are actually happy to talk to them. And there are people that, you know, not so much. Well, know that while you have some favorite customers and clients, the flip side's reverse as well. So your customers, they have favorite staff members. If you've closed your business abruptly, it's almost like a divorce. That relationship has been severed. So a way to connect and strengthen that relationship and your retention for both your employees and your customers is to connect them with your staff and how they're doing, what they're doing. Now, I'm gonna clarify this. You don't, you want to tie that connection if you do connect with your staff you, it's important to tie that connection um, to your business. So for example, I'll use Erica's, uh, as a, Erica's business as a, uh, an example here. Um, and I'm not saying this is my favorite person, it's hypothetical. <laughs> Let's say that McKinsey's one of my favorite people there at her business and she has a med spa. And um, a way to connect me with McKinsey I don't have kids, but it wouldn't be that necessarily appropriate for Erica to have McKinsey post or share some things about how she's homeschooling her kids. It's not really relevant to the business and it's personal. It's not really something that's appropriate to do. However, she could do a, you know, an inventory and say, hey, McKinsey, if, if McKinsey was stranded on a desert island for two weeks or well, let's say two months, besides sunscreen, what, what are the must have two other things that she would, couldn't do without. And that would be fun, a fun way for me to connect with McKinsey, whether it's her picture and, a, you know, the product and a little blurb by her or a quick home video. Um, but those are ways you can strengthen the relationship between your customer and your, your, um, your staff and also connect it back to your business. So think of it like a triangle, right? Not a, not a, what she's doing for homeschool or what she's making for dinner, but connect it to your business. Right? And also you can connect to strengthen those relationships with your other members and customers. People wanna to belong to a tribe and group and gangs, if you will. It's a basic need. People want to be connected to one another and you can be a place that they can connect when you connect it to your mission and purpose or your product and service, all of it kind of together. And another extremely well, extremely uh, useful thing, uh, helpful, positive, way to connect is just through gratitude. Um, I saw a business owner that just posted, um, I think they put it together as a video, but they had signs that their uh, employees held up and it was just gratitude for the support and some love to the customer. That love loop, if you wanna call it, is really, really powerful and important. Those are a bunch of different ways that you can connect. So remember that squeaky wheel analogy? Um, you don't have to be a squeaky, annoying wheel. Think of it as a squeaky wheel where you can make all of these different kinds of connections. All right, so that brings us to, here we go, acquisition. 
I touched, I, I hope that you picked up on this at the beginning because some people might have thought, oh, I don't really get how you can have customer acquisition when we're closed, but you can. And <clears throat> excuse me for one second. There is this 80-20 <clears throat> rule where it's a principle that applies to lots of different places in your life. And specifically, we're applying it to business. Roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. That means, it translates to, roughly 80% of your income comes from about 20% of your customers. This is golden for marketing and to um, market yourself and your business in the most cost-effective way. You know, when I talked about earlier that there's some of your favorite customers that maybe popped into your mind, if before COVID closed, you didn't know who your top 20% was, now is a great time to figure it out. It's important, it's vitally important for you to know who that top 20% is because that top 20% has, has gotten to that place because they fit you and you fit them, right? You are meeting one another's needs and wants and desires. It's like you are the perfect match. Those people are, um, they're vitally important to your business. Um, the, the stats that I have there to show you, that's title or that's um, connected back to the beginning. And just to show you the, the importance of connecting with that 20%. Of course, you always want to give everybody the same great service, but it's important that you know who that top 20% is. Remember, it's six to seven times more expensive to acquire a new customer. You don't want to lose them now. You want to keep them. And the probability of selling to an existing customer is 60 to 70%. Birds of a feather flock together. Um, I'm going to, let's see. I'm gonna take the screen share off for a second so that I can show you this illustration with my hands here. Can you see me? That's okay. So this is my little palm example. So your business, part of, if you haven't done this, part of working on your mission statement and creating a customer avatar is to know who you are and who you serve um, because you don't serve everyone. If you serve everyone, you don't serve anyone well. So at the hotel, we were um, a historic hotel, no um, TV, elevator, pets or kids, right? No children. It was in, uh, we had a bed and breakfast. It was historic. Um, there's a bunch of things that made us unique and made us different. Your business has these things, right? Your customers also have unique characteristics that are um, specific unto them. So for example, um, in the Dells, if you think about the customer that goes to Baldwin's Saloon as a, uh, opposed to someone who goes to McDonald's, you get two different pictures in your mind right now of two different customers. One's not better than the other, they're both great. But the illustration is that this uh, McDonald's serves people that have certain characteristics and they fit and they love each other and that's what we're looking for in our business. Baldwin's does the same thing. They have a specific um, customer profile, their customer avatar, they have people that they serve and they serve well. Um, so when you are serving those top 20%, Here's the, this is the important part of that customer acquisition that, that I love. All right. So hypothetic, here's your business. This is you. Here's me. And let's say I have these characteristics. Your business has these. When we find each other, when you spent the money or whatnot, and we find each other and we match up many of these characteristics, it's like a match made in heaven. We're excited. It's like a marriage, right? You don't marry everybody you date. <laughs> No, you picked the one, the, the, that one kind of went through all your filters and is the best match. All right, so let's say like I am that person for your business and I am this perfect match. On that slide, I said birds of a feather flock together. I know and I associate with people who are very similar to me, okay? So they're back here and they've got five or four. They've got lots of the same characteristics that I have. 
Now you can either, I can duck down, right? <laughs> Leave the screen and you can spend that money trying to find those people that fit you very well, or you can use me as a funnel for access for them. This is what excites me so much right now with business because you have a direct access and if you're building that communication with your audience, you have a fantastic funnel through me to access all of these other people. So can you imagine if you have connected, uh, let's say you've done a post or a promotion or something for uh, a product or a service and it relates to your mission and it, 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 it's something that's really exciting for people and they can't get it somewhere else. So if I see that it comes to me and I'm so excited that I share that on my social media because I know other people that I know are needing that thing you've instantly gained access to a bunch of highly qualified customers that are going to fit you very well. So this illustrates the importance of why you've got to consistently connect with those people right now in multiple ways, not just one print media, but video and all the things that you can um, and why you want to ask them for access. So I'm gonna screen share because I've got an illustration that I like very much um let's see if i can just pop it right back on here of course i can't <laughs> i'm sorry kids i'm a rookie screen share rookie there we go all right so i like this um, illustration very much these there's things called customer journey maps and you can um you could just google them and find a bunch of them the thing I don't like about most customer journey maps is that they have an entry and an exit point visually. If your customer entered your store and then they left your store and you had no connection, no way to loop them back to your business, that's a mistake. Right now you can be working on that, which is great. What is that thing? What's the communication? How does it look? How does it happen? once they make the purchase or leave your place of business and they go out. So on the right side of this graph, you can see that after they are, um, you've got loyalty programs, you go to your upsell, next sell, cross sell, whatever. Your referrals part, that loop at the bottom connection of this map, um, I think of that as when they leave your business and then they come back um, and they, come back into your business or they buy your product or service. Hopefully that helps illustrate what I was saying in a not very cohesive manner. <laughs> but I like this illustration because that is a viral loop that you have with your customers. They, you want to make sure that you connect with them once they leave your store or buy your product or service. There's so much to work on with business. It's very exciting right now. All right, so questions. I'd like to do a Q&A. Um, with you right now, if you have questions or comments, um, how have you been pivoting? What successes you've had? Um, what kinds of needs that you have? This is a, a bunch of information. I hope it's spurring some good thoughts for you and some things that you, um, you know, gearing up to think about how you can re-engage with your customers. But part of a, valu a valuable part of what the chamber does right now is to be able to make this connection. So. Um, I want to help us connect with one another and do some brainstorming as we uh, can have this time together. Let me stop sharing. All right. All right. So I was on this call with Rick the other day, and there are a bunch of shy people. <laughs> so if you have a comment or question or suggestion, something that you've done, um, please definitely. Just, un I think you have to have Lisa maybe unmute you or you can start talking while I unmute you. Actually, they can unmute themselves and we have a smaller group here. So you guys are feel free to unmute all of you right now. I don't think this is gonna interfere because we are a smaller, more intimate group. And then that way we can just actually have a conversation and you don't have to worry about those microphones. Perfect, perfect. I wanted to, oh, I'll wait for a second and then I, <laughs> have something I wanted to give some kudos for somebody who's pivoting. Well, I was just going to say, um, we've, or I have been a lot more concerted with um, 
daily posts to our social media platforms that has been really successful. And kind of circling back to what you were saying, Samantha, about, you know, really having kind of our mission in mind. And our mission is really to educate our audience. Um, there's a lot of um, misinformation myths about skincare. And so I, I really have a lot of fun with educating our audience. And, you know, just, um, it's been really, you know, wonderful to see the response um, that we've received just on our social media platforms um, through those videos of educating. Um, and, you know, like, it's been very fortunate for us. I mean, we did one video series on Latisse, um, and by the end of the week, we had sold out all our inventory. Not that that was necessarily my end game, but, you know, again, really just trying to educate people. I did another series on the Clarisonic. I've got a whole series on Botox this week. Um, but one thing that, that we have a lot of trouble with when you were talking about Samantha of reaching those birds of a feather, you know, in our industry, um, a lot of our clients are not super excited about sharing with their friends that they share those characteristics with that they're coming in to see us. So that's been a struggle for us from day one is that a lot of times people are very, um, you know, very secretive. And I think a lot of it comes down to judging. They don't want to be judged by their friends. Um, you know, we have a completely judgment free zone, but it's, you know, I would love to hear any ideas, suggestions, comments, feedback on how we can connect with you know, those, those like-minded um, friends and family of our clients that already, you know, come in to see us regularly. I feel it, Yurika, because I'm, I will be a testament right now. I have this uh, very strong, right here, this very strong uh, eyebrow thing here that I didn't want, that my mom had. Um, and it, it was a crease, right? Because I'm just, I think a lot. And I didn't want it to be permanent. So I was for years a Botox, closet Botox user, closet. And so I am the person you're speaking to, like, how did you get me to come out and start talking about it? Um, and I use flat out, I have a, a, an uphill battle and it's challenging because what you're trying to do is also change the perceptions, which is a little slower, change perceptions of how people, um, how people view self-care. And I've heard you say a couple of times some things that really resonated with me. And I thought that makes a lot of sense because there is some, you know, you talked about some secretive cloaking or, you know, oh, I go in and get treatments and, you know, you do lots of different things there um, to different levels. But I think you had said there was a question of, oh, do you use something or you do get some treatment? And the comment was, um, it was given more or made more as sort of a brushing off and a poo-pooing, oh, well, you must do, you know, what kind of work have you had done? And your response was beautiful. And it, you related it. You said, well, do you work on your, you know, do you get your hair done? Do you get your nails done? Do you eat right? Do you work out? You're working on your body and going to the gym. So you were connecting those uh, connecting that information, the things that you do to something that is already a natural, very um, well accepted standard in society, which for example, the gym, right? So people learn by making connections to things they already know. So when you did that, for me, it kind of turned a light on of, oh my gosh, that's right. You just connected it to something that we already do and we already seem uh, as normal. So I think for your business in particular, that's uh, just one way that I would think of that you can reconnect it with. This is simply self-care and maintenance, mm -hmm. just like diet, exercise, brushing your teeth, right. going and flossing and things like that. Thank you. No. Yeah, I might resonate. I might kind of, I might use the different platforms to talk about that. You can use your clients that are open to saying, um, you know, saying, hey, I'm a Botox user now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just using the clients that will step forward or your staff that's great um, and talking about uh, taking, a, um, taking down some of those preconceived notions about mm -hmm. 
uh, people, because I've even gotten it when I've shared about, you know, getting Botox right here. And they, they'll say, oh my gosh, they think my face is going to be frozen. I'm like, do I look frozen to you? No, it's, a, <laughs> it's an education piece, right? It's, you don't, you can or you don't have to. It's just, it helps you look and feel better. So, and resonating with what your mission is. And I know what your mission is to help people look and feel their best. Mm -hmm. It's no different than like what Charlotte does with cabbie clothes, you know, helping women feel empowered. Or wearing <laughs> wearing pants at a Zoom meeting, or putting on your perfume, <laughs> whatever makes you feel strong and powerful and um, confident, it's good. Anybody else can chime in there. So, Erica, you mentioned that you're doing the education pieces, um, which are great. Do you have an education piece as to what really Botox is and how it's? In, intertwined with self-care? So oh, funny that you would mention that. This week, actually, I have a whole series of videos that I'm doing because um, tomorrow is the 22nd birthday of Botox Cosmetics. So yeah, in fact, one piece is just myth busting with Botox because oh, cool. there's a lot of myths about Botox. Um, and I think the social media platforms are a great way to educate people, especially mm -hmm. right now because- right. People are so plugged into social media. And I've really, even though, and Samantha and I've talked about this and we've struggled with it personally for a long time, I have really resisted videos because it's so hard for me to look and listen to myself on video. But I told this to Samantha, I'm like, it occurred to me, that's how the rest of the world sees and hears me. So I just am the only person that's, you know, shocked to see this difference. And, and having this, whole COVID-19 has really been such a kick in the pants to, to do these videos and to, you know, get them up there. They don't have to be perfect. I'm learning a lot on video editing every single day, um, but it's amazing the um, engagement and interactions that we've received just from doing those. But yes, just to answer your question, Lisa, I've got a whole series that'll go up this week. Each day we'll have a different video educating people on Botox so that, you know, again, it's, you know, it'll help normalize it for people. You know, one, one fun fact is there have been a couple of studies now that have shown that people that have clinical depression will actually get a bigger improvement in their depression symptoms compared to being on antidepressants, which is really interesting. Huh. Um, so there's a lot of that fun stuff that I want to share with our audience. Right. I like your myth buster idea. I think that's something that will resonate with a lot of different age groups. Yeah. And, so and I just, cool. yeah. And I just got a funny, uh, we have a, a private um, page for my team. And on Friday night, one of my team members had posted a picture of her without her Botox. And I was like, oh, I, I really want to use that because I know a lot of our audience right now, because we still get calls to the office. Are you guys open? Can we come in? Um, I mean, people are really like, like I'm having with my nails. It's like, it's crisis. Yeah. <laughs> We're not showing hands today. We're not going to no. show hands. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I want to speak to a couple of things that, that Erica said she's gotten a lot of, um, engagement with and social media loving from her customers. What we talked about earlier in the slide, I said they don't always, you know, part of what she's doing is she's solving a problem. She's, maybe they can't come in and get Botox, right? But she's creating connection with those customers. And the engagement that she's seen is a very good illustration of the uh, point that I made earlier about your customers want to know how you're doing. They want to see you. You've, you've, we've ripped everybody apart. And the way you can engage with them is through social media and through their email. Um, and it's really important because they love, I've seen so much love from customers back to the businesses on social media. And I've been reduced to tears a number of times because it's just the compassion and the way that this crisis is making our nation come together is so exciting to me. Not that the exciting part is not the sickness. I'm, Totally want to make sure I clarify that. The exciting thing is that we are more unified and we're more supportive and we're more, in general, what I see is more loving towards each other, which is where we need to be. Now, like for example, 
um, Terry's place, you know, you're closed, right? I thought about this as we drove a motorcycle through downtown. I thought, oh my gosh, my heart felt because I had the Vault Hotel, right? And my heart went out to all these, um, these hotels that just, you, your income is just gone. But to connect with those customers, I mean, I know that I had customers that their favorite person was Mandy. They love talking to Mandy or their favorite person was Denise and a way to engage with them. And you want to keep that connection so that when they're back um, and they can come back out, they are tied and connected. You're still in their mind. And it could be that I've seen some virtual um, video tours where people, you know, you could do all sorts of weird things depending on your brand and your mission and your state and your purpose, you know, why people come to your, your place. Is it for something about the food? You could do some videos about the food or connections about the drink. She's like, <laughs> drinking. <laughs> you, I saw there's a, a place, a cocktail place that does this cocktails in the curb now, curbside cocktails, I think. And they're posting um, some super fun um, marketing about, how to make uh, Moscow mules and then you can actually order it, go curbside and pick it up and have it for the weekend. Some really fun ways to solve problems and to engage with those customers. So <laughs> Well, they come for the wine, right? The view mm -hmm. and the wine. Um, we, I have a lot of things in place to do this. We do email blasts for sales. So we're creating a couple of the pictures where we're holding up um, signs like we're remodeling for you, we miss you, um, exactly what you've been saying. We're creating this little um, media spiel to put in our email blast instead of a sales on you know what special or, or events coming up. We're gonna do a, how are you doing? This is what we're doing. We hope you're safe kind of um, email blast. There's some pictures of us holding up signs saying be safe and you know we painted the kitchen today kind of thing um comfort of course we're still open so those videos are going to be more of um we're here you know i think the hotel workers are getting forgotten a little bit of frontline people we got uh you know railroad people got to be working and so we do have essential workers here and I don't have the biggest of lobbies. So it's like six feet is pretty much out my front door. So when we have a lot of arrivals, like we will on Sunday, we have a bunch of crew coming in. We have to manually be hostesses and keep everybody safe. And so those videos are gonna come out saying, I got the best customers. Look at them, they're all the way up the hill because yeah. you know I don't have enough room in the lobby. So they're out there having a cigarette or whatever. But. Um, those videos are coming out. We're going to attack social media this week, and um, maybe I can share them with you guys. Yeah, those sounds great. Those are great ideas. Yeah, I love it. I love Thank it. Thank you. It. Shout out to my staff. I just, um, I can't thank them enough. We have people that came from New York for the weekend. We have people on self-quarantine because they had to go you know, the Texas or, you know, it's been, uh, we've had the VA here, you know, we've had a nurse here for a very long time mm -hmm. and she's got a colleague I know that uh, was struggling at the hospital with COVID. So mm -hmm. we're really, really kind of um, in the mix here. And I just, my staff just steps up, they sanitize, they throw candy at people across the lobby, you know, and they're checking in here, you want a payday? And we throw it at them because we can't, be close anymore so there's a lot of throwing going on in the lobby but I just I mean like when the family came from New York a vibration goes through all my staff and we amp our protocol up and think about our room attendants that have to do the room and whatnot so I just need to give a shout out while I'm on nice. while I'm on the to my staff that's great that thank kind you of love that kind of love is super important to communicate because as business owners we get this uh, curse of knowledge, Erica, and I've talked about the curse of knowledge. And um, you know how all those daily operations are, are transpiring and you know how your, what your staff is doing and how amazing they are. And we tend to, it becomes like the, the thing that, you know, you move into a house and then you just don't fix the thing and you just don't notice it anymore. It becomes part of something you take for granted, right? We take for granted that we've got the mountain and the rivers and these views all the time. So the challenge, especially now becomes, it's a challenge all the time, is to think about 
our business from the customer's standpoint. What would be interesting to them? What's a value add for them? How can we engage with them? How can we meet one of the needs that is related to product and service and also that relationship piece? So all those things that you're talking about are great. Um, they are things that people really want to know and they it's a way for them to make connections with people, which is fantastic, which is what we're all about, right? When we serve people well, we grow. See, and I might be ready for some boat talks here soon. I'm, I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on to that. Be natural. I'm trying to do that. Be natural. Sixty thing, but a sixty is this uh, January is going to be the sixty. So, oh. and I, and I just want to. I don't know. I'm trying to do that natural. I'm strong. I'm a strong woman, getting older, <laughs> feeling. But you guys look pretty good. So you know, I might be thinking. No. Well, Especially you. that one, yeah, that famous one about her. Yeah, That's yeah. The infamous one. There you go. Yeah. You know, it's funny. <laughs> Not, you know, how people see us is, you know, we had a, a business owner years and years ago that came in um, at the begging of his wife. And she just said, look, you look so angry all the time. And it's very <laughs> intimidating for your your staff and it's very intimidating for your customers. And so he came in, bless his heart. And we, um, we, you know, took good care of him with the Botox. He came back. We always have people come back for a two week follow-up. And then he's like, I actually had, uh, for the first time ever, my, one of my staff members laughed at, he had a very dry sense of humor, actually laughed at a, a you know, joke that he had said. And he's like, in all the years, I've never, 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 never had anyone laugh at something. <laughs> So it's, it's a fascinating thing. Yeah. There's, there's your first uh, myth buster. I'm yeah. not really mad yeah, at yeah. all. I just need a little Botox. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I think it's, um, did you call it Brotox, <laughs> Erica? Yeah. Uh, Brotox bro 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 when you, when you go. I'm this. not yeah. mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Hey, if you, um, there's a couple of books that if you haven't done your mission or revisited it, um, this should be The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, I think should be required reading for any entrepreneur. Um, I, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. You can get it from your local bookstore um, or I can shoot them a link later, but it is, it's so important about getting what's in your brain to uh, be executed well. And then the other one that has to do with your mission and purpose is Start With The Why by Simon Sinek. Um, these things will carry you through. All right. So um, I, I don't know if there are other questions. Happy to stay on the call, but I also know you're probably pretty busy getting these things and hopefully you're excited and ready to start tackling some of these questions. It um, looks like Laura has a question. Oh, good. Or are you just waving hi? Well, I was waving hi and um, hi, I'm Laura. Um, I have, um, I have a, Kind of, I'm in the construction industry. My business is Enerstructa. Um, so um, I do a multitude of things. Some of my work is not has not been affected since in Oregon, construction is still considered essential. And so I do consulting work with builders. Um, you know, and I think that possibly depending how, on how this goes, my work is just going to see a possible delay and slowdown because, you know, I don't know with, you know, we're they have all these jobs currently and that are going. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see, you know, if, you know, if, you know, if things get to a point where it was like 2008 and everything slowed down or not. Um, and so, so that, so that works still like happening. I'm also building my own house right now. So I have like those things that I'm working on. And then the other things um, I do some DIY classes through partnerships and workforce development. Me. so like that work has been canceled and um and those like customers um are still go going to be there once we can meet in person again so really for me i my i'm still at a stage where i'm building building my relationships with, with customers um and so most of the, my existing relationships are still there even if either i'm working with them currently or they're just they have to be postponed just because and i'm still t staying in touch with them um, as an educator and the plan is still to have those things happening. So 
Um, so yeah, I'm, it's an interesting thing. I'm doing some Facebook live, um, things. I'm trying that out. So again, like I, yeah, I'm trying to make some videos and things. I'm much more of better, like I'm more comfortable in person. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to figure out the digital world of video and providing education that way and bringing in, um, a group that I haven't been doing as much work with, which is existing homeowners and, and people looking to buy homes. Um, and so figuring out how to, how to acquire those people through social media. So that's kind of been my biggest challenge. Um, I was planning to launch a campaign this spring, but, or right around this time. So, but I'm just kind of holding back on that until, I mean, I'm doing a little bit of education. So I'm, I'm kind of doing, focusing on that versus trying to do like actual acquisition because I can't be going into, into people's houses. So I do energy consulting and um, audits and that kind of thing. So yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. Just I'm more on, on the gate acquiring customer side of things right now. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you have anything to say for that, Samantha. For sure. And I, I the little screen, I'm sorry, I, you told me you were popping on and the little screen at top it it didn't have you on there. So I'm glad to see you. I worked with Laura um, when we did our house build and it was, she's so much fun. So when you're talking about <laughs> customer acquisition and building your brand and doing a Facebook marketing campaign or uh, building that audience, you've already, you've got a couple of things that, you know, remember I had those five, the hand, the here's who you are and who you serve. Um, you've got some of those in the bag right now. You are a woman in this mostly male dominated um, arena, which is already, a, I think it's something that puts a more of a unique stamp on you because there are other women who will instigate the, the things that, well, they'll contact you because they feel appropriate, like they feel comfortable doing it. So for your customer acquisition, right now in your communication um make sure you have your mission <laughs> start with that why your mission and purpose identify that in the the pdf there's a, a link that can help you if you haven't done it there's a link that can help you kind of walk through that process but just doing what you're doing and putting it out there right now because you can't actually be face to face with people but putting it out there what you do and who you are through your videos, through your Facebook lives, through your, however you're doing that, that right now is exactly what you should be doing. And this is, other people can feel free to chime in, but because the more you do that, the more the people that you resonate with will connect with you and then they'll share it. So you don't want to attract everybody you want to attract the right people and by attracting the right people you connect with your mission and purpose and then you give you uh communicate the value and communicate what you do and how you're to how you serve people and solve their problems so mm -hmm. if somebody wants to chime in they're welcome to too how do you get that, that pdf is that on the zoom on the call um, Katie dropped it in the Zoom chat on the side. There's a little download um, link. And if you don't, if you can't get it, then just email me and I can send it to you. Yeah, don't see it. Okay. I can email it to you, no problem. Okay. I'm on my phone too, so I haven't, I've usually been doing these on my phone versus on a computer, so maybe that changes things. <laughs> No, I, th I appreciate your thoughts, though. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out because I, I, it's kind of, you know, a lot of people don't really know what I do. And so it's like the the builder and the builder acquisition. I work with Tumblelum a lot in a lot of different things. So like they've been my, my awesome like nexus. And so which they also have connection to the homeowners as well. So, you know, I haven't really you know, try that angle with them yet, but they've been a really great supporter in a lot of the work that I do in doing builder outreach and doing the DIY stuff and that kind of thing. And so that's been a really great partnership. Like that's how my business has really been successful. So um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to do more of these things like on my own. Like most of what I do is in partnerships with other organizations. And so just trying to do my own acquisition is, um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> But you also, so I, you also spoke to something of doing those, uh, you, working with other organizations, 
when you mm -hmm. work with another organization that has a similar mission and purpose, like you wouldn't want to work with an organization that um, is completely counter uh, counter to what your mission and purpose is or what your values are, because that would acquire and give you an audience to the wrong the wrong audience. Just like I use yeah. the McDonald's um, and the the Baldwin Saloon um, uh, you know example earlier. If your audience is if your audience profile and your customers are more like Baldwin's and you want to connect with Baldwin's and connect with them. And if it's more like the, the McDonald's customers, then you want to connect with them. So when mm -hmm. you're thinking about that, uh, partnering with those people, you want to be intentional about what brands fit. Like where do your, if it's all DIY, then Home Depot is great. If it's not, you know, if it's, I want to just have somebody else do it for me, then that's obviously not the place. But mm -hmm. that's a great place to start. And if even right now, if Home Depot, or excuse me, Tumalum probably has, I'm guessing, a platform, the email platform or something that they're, um, that they're using, they're communicating with the customers, use them as that, that funnel to grab those customers. And then when you get them, put, the, put those um, contacts in a place that you own don't just rely on Tumalum to yeah. feed you those people. So, but you, I bet that some of your DIY videos and such that if Tumalum, if you connected some of the tools and things to Tumalum's, uh, to be able to buy it at Tumalum, I would imagine that they would be happy to promote that right now. Curbside pickup of whatever kind of screws you need to make this table or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I have been doing that because I've just started doing some DIY classes on Saturdays and I like you know, referenced them and they shared it. They were sharing the event with their people. So via Facebook. Perfect. So yeah, it's just kind of, I'm just kind of testing the waters out and yeah. So anyway, thanks for your time. It was good to see you. Great to see you, my dear. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying your house. <laughs> yes. All right, um, I, and are there some other questions or whatnot? It's about nine o'clock if we wanted to wrap things up um, or if you had something you wanna contact me, you're happy to do it. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Lisa. All right, we will um, take the recording and the PDF when it's done. We will send out a follow-up to all of you who registered. So you will get that in your email box. Um, and so we'll do that and then if there, and we'll have Samantha's contact information in that email also. So if you don't have it, you'll have access. And we do appreciate you guys coming on board and just listening and asking questions and being engaged. Uh, we will be hosting two to three of these a week, depending on the nature of the, um, the webinar, but also we may slide in a third when we get these amazing updates from SBDC our Small Business Development Center, um, like we did last week, we said, yes, we'll get you on because they were crucial updates and some huge changes that happened for our businesses. And we didn't want them to wait over the weekend to find those things out. So there again, we're trying our best to meet your needs. If there is something that you have a question about or you're not finding the information or you cannot find the right connection, please just give us a phone call. We are here at the office. Um, I have some staff at home and I have some staff here at the office. We can also be messaged, emailed, texted, all of the above so that you guys can get a hold of us so that we can reach out and make that necessary connection for you. So everybody stay safe. Keep that six foot of distance, but smile big so people can see it easier. Um, and then just take care of each other and your neighbors. Um, and I just applaud all of you employers who are going the extra mile to make sure that their staff are still either working or making feel included and feeling valued. This is not an easy time for any of us. None of us have navigated this before. So kudos out to all of you for uh, making efforts on any part. And thank you guys so much and have an amazing day. Thanks so much. Thank you. Go tackle your Mondays.